Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to talk to you about an important blend mode that is missing from both Resolve and Fusion, and that's the hard mix blend mode. And we're going to be building our own from scratch. Now, one of the things to know about hard mix is it's one of the so-called special eight blend modes in Photoshop which can be controlled using the mysterious fill slider, which seems to be unique to Photoshop. And a lot of Photoshop users use this option to relight their photographs. Now, if you look online, you'll quickly discover a zillion theories about how this fill slider works, but I haven't actually found a plausible answer. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a solution that I think works pretty convincingly. And along the way, we're going to be working with some very interesting and useful custom processes. So let's get going. So here I am in Resolve and I'm going to make a new Fusion composition. Right click a new Fusion composition. Let's call this Hard Mix and let's double click to open it up. Let's open up the media pool and drag in our two assets. We don't want them merged. So media one is this road shot and media two is this gradient. And I'll give you links for both of those. So the straightforward way of making hard mix is as follows. We're going to use a custom tool. Let's come over to channels and we're going to type the following. If open brackets C1 plus C2 is less than one comma zero comma one close brackets then we're going to copy that and we're going to paste that into the other two fields so then we are going to take our image and pipe it into image one and our gradient and pipe it into image two and look at the result so there you go that is the hard mix operation switching back to photoshop you can see it looks exactly the same same two elements exactly the same result. So the thing about hard mix is it returns only a maximum of black and white and six colors, the six primary colors of red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. So that makes eight overall. And it's not particularly useful this does have some sort of technical uses in this form, but unless you wanted this crazy sort of pop art look, it's really not a way that you'd actually want to process your images directly. However, the interesting thing is that in Photoshop, hard mix is one of the so-called special eight blend modes. Now, if we look at the opacity slider and set that to 50%, this is pretty useless still. We've got all this steppiness, it's all blocky. Nobody would want that. So let's reset that. And let's look instead at what happens if we adjust the fill slider. So let's set that to 50% instead. So now we've kept that color information from the gradient and we've kept that nice crunchy contrast. And we can dial this into taste. So probably 25% is a nice sort of tasteful amount. But you can see how very different that is from the opacity operation. And you can look for the answer to this online, but I have only been able to find wrong answers to what is happening with fill. So let me suggest a correct answer. I'm going to come back to resolve and we're going to actually build the hard mix operation in a different way. So I'm going to delete that custom tool and I'm going to add a new one. And for this, I want the average of the base and the blend layer. And I can do that by typing in the red field, open bracket C1 plus C2, close brackets, divided by two to get the average. So then I can copy that and then paste that into the green, paste it into the blue. So now if we take our road shot and pipe it into image one and our gradient into image two, We've got an average of those two layers added together. So let's actually call that add average so you know what it is. So then what we want to do to get our hard mix is to normalize the output of this add average. So we're going to add another custom tool and we're going to come over to channels and we're going to type the following in the red expression fields. So open brackets C1 minus N1 close brackets divided by open brackets N2 minus n1 close brackets and we can copy that and paste it into the green and the blue and take our add average into the input and take a look at it so the reason it's white is that our number two needs to be set to one so with it set to one 
the output of this normalize is the same as the input. Let's call it normalize. So what we need to do here is we need to set the number one and number two both to 0.5. So 0.5 and 0.5. And there you go. We're back to our hard mix. Here's the Photoshop hard mix for a comparison. So there we go. So the difference here is that we can now actually create our interesting fill operation. But the only thing we need to do, first of all, is to clamp this. Let me switch the sub view to the color inspector and you can see that our values here are all kind of way out of range and that's because the normalizers has sent them off into the stratosphere. So what we need to do is create a simple clamp operation. So new custom tool and we're going to call this clamp and in the red channel we are going to type max open brackets min open brackets c1 comma 1 close brackets comma zero close brackets and then we're going to copy and paste that as before into the other two fields and then actually we look back at our color inspector you can see over here all our values are max out at one and don't go below zero either this is good okay so what, what I now want to do is to make a control node and I'm going to do it using my favorite dent no particular reason why I'm using dent other than it's not got many uh, default controls. I'm going to type F2 and I'm going to rename it as CTL and I'm going to right click on it, edit controls. In the name field, I'm going to type fill and over here, I'm going to select slider control and we want a default of one, press OK. Now over here in the user tab, we've got this fill slider that can control everything. So first of all, let's hook up the normalize. So I want to add an expression to the number one field. So add an expression there. And here I will type CTL dot fill divided by two. And in the number two field, enter another expression. And here I just want to invert the number one value. So I'm going to type one minus, and then I can just pick whip number one. So now, if you come back to our control and we reduce our fill value, you can see that we're getting a nice sort of smooth transition out of that hard mix. And that's not too bad, except for one thing. When we come all the way down to zero, we're getting back to our add average. And we don't want that. We want to be able to get back to our original image that looks like this. So we'll have to link our add average to the control value as well. So let's come over to the add average controls and let's enter an expression for the number one in and let's simply type ctl.fill for that. So then I'm going to come over to the channels and to save lots of typing, I'm going to copy and paste this expression into each of the three fields. So expression on the screen. And now you can probably see if we look at our clamp output here, our fill is at zero and we're back to our original image. But then looking at our final output, as we adjust that fill slider, we're basically getting that really nice Photoshop fill effect. We're getting all the color and all the contrast. However, there is one final detail that we need to take care of if we're going to exactly match what is happening in Photoshop. And that is that we need to apply a smoothing operation after this clamp. So let's add yet another custom tool and let's call this smooth. So the first thing I want to do here is to come to the number one and add an expression. And we're just going to type ctl.fill again. Then I'm going to come over to channels and I'm going to paste this extremely long expression into the three fields. And this is creating a nice smoothing. So if we actually look at the output of that, you see what is actually happening is we're getting far greater contrast than we were without that. So basically it's creating an S curve that um, really enhances the effect. So for a quick visualization of what that's doing, I've got a grayscale ramp in my background here. I'm going into my normalize and my clamp. And from our waveform sub view, we can see that the values run from zero all the way up to 100 in a straight line. 
And then if we adjust our normalize, let's say we go for 0.3 and 0.6, you can see we still got a straight line between those two values. But if we look at our smoothing operation, you can see we've got this really nice S curve here. And if I reset that to zero and one, you can get a clearer picture of that S curve. And that's how it's creating that extra contrast because the blacks stay lower for longer and the whites get whiter sooner. So not only does that create more contrast, but it also provides a smoother transition between those values. So here we are, we've built our hard mix blend mode and we've created this very useful fill control that is very similar, if not pretty much identical to what's happening in Photoshop. Obviously, depending on exactly what's in your foreground and background layers, you'll want to be pretty conservative about the fill value, but even at small amounts, it can add pleasing contrast and richness. So we've covered a lot of ground here, and there's probably quite a lot that I should be explaining in more detail, but I think that's enough for this tutorial. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.